this is Emilio from Digital Stereo Guitar. Today we're going to cover essentially all the equipment that I like to use as part of my uh, church music ensemble around playing guitar. We're going to go through the pedal board, we're going to go through my amp, we're going to go through all the, all the little accessories that I would say are pretty beneficial to every church worship guitarist. So the guitar that I generally use is this beast. This is my uh, Gibson Les Paul 60s neck model with that beautiful sort of uh, wood grain, sunbursty sort of color. This is a matte color, so it's not a shiny version. Uh, you've got your double um, pickups there. You've got your, you know, your switcher there between my pickups. And it's overall a great sounding guitar. Beautiful, warm sounding guitar, and it's fantastic for when you're playing in any sort of environment. In a church setting, uh, this guitar just gives you that really nice warm sound, especially when you're you know, playing the lower end stuff, you're playing a quiet sort of music. If you're pairing it really nicely with sorts of different sorts of pedals, your delays, those sort of things, even something like a, little, like a sparkle drive to give you a little bit of overdrive. Um, if you've got uh, some more you know, sounds that require a little bit more overdrive, you wanna play around with different sorts of licks, different sounds, you wanna layer different sorts of um, pedals together and give you a bit more of that overdrive, a bit more of a heavier sound, uh, this, is, this is where it's at. And especially if you pair this with the right sorts of pedals and you pair it with the right amp, is where you're gonna get that beautiful, beautiful sound. The amp that I use is a Vox, this is an AC15. Uh, you've got the bigger brother of this, which is the AC30, which just has a couple of speakers. This one just has just a single speaker in the middle. Uh, fantastic tone, excellent quality speakers. You've got a couple of inputs, a normal, where you just feed your guitar straight into this, perhaps through pedals. And then you've got a top boost, where you can actually go and adjust the actual bass treble and the overall volume of that particular channel. Now, the great thing is that this amp is a great all-round sounding amp for uh, most church environments, regardless of what sort of music you're playing. If you're playing the newer, more contemporary stuff, even covers of hymns that are you know been redone to sound pretty contemporary, um, this uh, amp is fantastic. It's got a very, very nice, clean, warm sound, uh, and then it does actually have some built-in overdrive if you do want to run that, or you run it through pedals, uh, and then it gives you a really, really nice sound. Now, in the case of my setup, because I'm using a Gibson Les Paul, it just pairs really, really nicely with the Vox. So this is a great all-round amp. Uh, other good ones around this would be something like the Fender. Uh, the Blues Junior is a fantastic sounding um, amp as well that mixes really good for most church environments. I like to split the accessories that I um, carry between my pedal board and my uh, guitar case. So inside my guitar case, I've just got some simple stuff. Something that a lot of people overlook is just a simple cloth. A good cloth to just wipe down your guitar, remove any form of dust, uh, especially after you've been playing. The, the oil on your fingers can go on your strings, can damage the guitar, the wood on your guitar. In here, I've just got a whole range of picks. I like these uh, green picks just here. These are sort of my, what are they? Uh, they're 88 millimeters um, pick there you know they're pretty strong um, I don't like to have a pick that is too soft um, because I find it doesn't give me a nice sound but I don't like it to be too hard either like a bass pick where it just uh, feels a bit too rough so something that is quite firm but still uh, a little bit bendy at the end of the day the pick that you select is really up to you uh, you select the one that works for you but I know when I was especially starting out playing guitar is I went through a different uh, range of different picks, different feels. Uh, these ones are slightly um, soft, so they're not a shiny sort of pick. So have a you know buy yourself a range of different sorts of picks. They're they're pretty they're pretty cheap, and that way you can find out which one uh, fits you best. Um, spare guitar strings always carry some spare guitar strings, very very important. Thread your guitars, chop them off, um, you know so you're safe. A little Phillips head screwdriver so I can adjust my uh, pickups up and down uh, on the actual neck of my guitar if I need to adjust the, you know, the actual um, the string areas as well. It's always good to have uh, a small little uh, Phillips head screwdriver. Uh, a capo, um, capos are always good. Even if you are a electric guitar player, a lot of electric guitar players will not use capos. If you're not too 
uh, comfortable sometimes when you're changing keys because especially if you're playing in church bands and you've got a a uh, a female uh, you know leading a song versus a male leading a song the keys may be changed so it's just easy sometimes just to throw in a capo and you're not caught out if you don't know what key and how to transpose from one key to the other uh, I've got one of these things it's really just a lead extender uh, this is always helpful this is really just a uh, a double to single to plug into an amp for example and then I can run two guitars uh, into one particular amp uh, I've got just a little tuner this is just really a simple little tuner. I've got obviously tuner on my pedal board itself, but sometimes if I don't have my pedal board on me or I can't be bothered plugging it all up and powering it up and then running my guitar into there, it's sometimes nice just to have a little uh, battery powered um, tuner just like this. Just plug your guitar straight in and you can tune it very, very easily. Spare nine volt battery, even though all my pedals are uh, powered up and I'm running them all you know, with, with power, uh, you know, you never know when you don't have power available and you just want to just plug it in to one of your pedals and just get it up and running. At our church, we use uh, in-ears. So rather than having uh, a fallback to hear myself or sometimes having an amp on the stage, uh, we encourage our musos to uh, have themselves just a pair of in-ears. These are Shure um, in headphones and these are then run into a, uh, like an in pack, um, a Shure pack or something similar that is then tucked into my belt or into my back pocket and then I can actually adjust my volumes up and down and, and adjust the mix uh, that I've got running into my in-ears rather than having a fallback or sometimes an amp on the stage um, that can create a lot of uh, a, you know a lot of uh, noise on the stage sometimes the sound guy uh, wants to have a really nice mix uh, in the entire you know in, in, in the entire church uh, wherever you may meet so sometimes it's necessary for the stage volume to be really down so that all the musicians and the singers can get themselves some in-ears so that they can keep the stage volume down and then you know everybody is happier because of that. Uh, and then with the in-ears is different sorts of earbuds um, depending on what sort of earbuds you've got. Sometimes I like to adjust them depending on you know on how I'm feeling and how my ears are. These are just something you know you never know when you're going to need some earbuds. You know, if I'm going to a loud place, I'm very, very loud. Uh, I don't have access to in-ears. The stage volume is ridiculously loud. Um, just nice to have a pair of earplugs there with you. And I don't know why I've got two of these, but I've just got a couple of those, uh, you know, when you change a, a, a string on your guitar and rather than you manually just turning them over and over, these just make it easy. I think I got, I bought one and then I got one for free when I bought something, but I've, I've got two. There you go. We then move into my pedal board. Let's open this up. So this is a pedal train, pedal board. Um, I've used a different range of pedal boards. Uh, I've also built and customized my own pedal boards. At this stage, I'm liking the pedal train. It was the right dimensions, the right size, uh, the right fittings, and it was cheap, it was light. That was the big thing that led me to the pedal train is that it's a metal frame and it was super light. Um, other pedal boards that I've had in the past that have had a wooden frame have been fairly, fairly heavy, so I've opted not to go down that route. So, what have we got in here? We've got ourselves, obviously, lead. Have yourself a few leads. Um, don't bring uh, leads just enough for your guitar to your pedal board to your amp or your guitar to your amp. Um, always have some spares. They're always good. Um, some more sets of strings. You know, always carry strings. I carry some strings in my case as well as in my pedal board. Just a standard kettle cable. This one's actually from a Mac, which is why it's white. Uh, I think it looks cool, nicer than the black one. But I always carry a spare one of these in case you need some extra power. And then I've got some extra spare um, patch leads, some other little accessories, a little plug there, um, which I've soldered on. Um, but yeah. My pedal board itself, it's got a couple of these. These are brilliant, absolutely brilliant. One spot uh, power adapters. So I used to have those uh, power bricks inside here. Uh, and they were just bulky, they took up space. A lot of people have them tucked in underneath the pedal board itself. After doing some research, I found these things. Uh, fantastic, they are nine volt. They go up to 1700 milliamps each, which is actually quite good. The best way you can actually check is um, if you do a bit of homework and you look into all of your pedals, go online, check out what um, the voltage requirements are for a lot of pedals. 
and then you can add that up and then you can find out whether one of these will be sufficient. For the most people, these are gonna be quite good, especially if the pedals themselves have got a nine volt input. Um, if you do have pedals that are not nine volts, some of them are 12 or 18, then you may have a trouble with one of these. Uh, it's all daisy chained on the back via power across all of the pedals uh, and it just makes my power much, much easier. And then really all I need is on the power board is I just need a couple of inputs for this as well as an input for my amp. This is something that I found super helpful and still find super helpful and something that I would recommend to you is just building your own pedal snake. Um, you can spend a lot of money going online trying to find something that fits um, well, that makes your cable mess tidy. So rather than running my cables out of here, my power's out of here, uh, and then sort of running you know, three or four cables all the way to my power and to my amp, I've just built a, one of these things uh, and then just fed them through, all right? So literally, this is just some sort of uh, elastic pedal snake uh, type of material, which I bought on eBay, which was super cheap. I think this is like, um, 12, 12 feet long, roughly. Uh, and then I just fed my cables through. It did take a little bit of time to feed my cables through, but once it went through, it was much easier. Now this particular one, I've only got just the one cable running through it, the one um, guitar cable, but there are other ones that I've got where I've got a couple of guitar cables running through. And then the other thing that I've also got running through it is a couple of these powers as well. Just a standard uh, DC powers because I've got my nine volt, um, you know, one spots here, which are running inside of them. So these actually run into my power. This thing goes all the way to my amp, into my power boards, and then these things just plug into that. So this is really just an extension uh, for my power itself. So rather than running this directly into my amp or into my pedals, uh, I let this do its whole thing. And then really out of my pedals, is just one single long cable running my power as well as my outputs from my pedals themselves. So here is the pedal board that I am currently using. Uh, it's got a good range of different sorts of pedals uh, that really gives me the mix and the sound that I want to get out of my guitar and out of my amp. We've got ourselves a volume pedal, we've got ourselves a wah pedal, we've got a few different mo modular pedals there as well, some delay, some overdrives, we've got a looper, we've got a tuner, we've got a, a, a micro amp as well for my volume, but that really just feeds uh, through the guitar very, very nicely. It mixes really, really well with my uh, Les Paul and then out through my Vox amp. So for most um, church, type of songs that you would do, uh, regardless of whether they're older school redone hymns, whether they're the more contemporary stuff by some of the big uh, you know, church bands out there. Um, this I found is a good mix uh, for, what I, you know, for what I need. Um, I've played around with a lot of pedals um, throughout a number of years and just found that this is just a good overall balance and can create most of the sounds that I need and at least has the, the pedal um, the types of pedals that I need that I think are important for any uh, church worship guitarist. So for me, really overlaying all of these core pedals, we'll say these are my core pedals, my overdrives, my mods and my delays, uh, mixing and matching these, uh, turning them on at certain times, putting one on more than others is something that is super, super beneficial. Um, very often you wouldn't just have one on and not the other. Um, I like to mod these together, so it's good to learn the songs, understand the parts that you are responsible for in playing as the electric guitarist, and then you adjust the pedals uh, as you need to. You turn them on, you turn them off as you need. And the great thing is about your delays, you can tap the tempo of the song so that you know that your delay is gonna be in time to the song. If the drummer goes out of beat, which can happen, you can then tap again and you can then get your beat back to where it was uh, to be in mix and in sync with the rest of the band. So there you have it, that is an overview of all of the gear that I use on any Sunday service when I'm playing at church. Uh, I hope you found it helpful. If you did, I would love it if you commented below. Also subscribe to my channel, like this video, and we'll see you next time.